today. Recording. Anybody else that wants to record this call can record this call. My name is Fearless Floyd, Floyd Pleasant Tarvin IV. I host a uh, social media platform on probably every platform you can think of called the Fearless Floyd Show. Um, I brought this meeting together to present um, multiple people uh, with regards to Anna Von Wright's, Anna Von Wright's is Federation of States, the multiple existing and non-functional and dysfunctional uh, states assemblies under the Federation of States, as well as Anna's new uh, fake bank. Um, I'll get into that in, in a minute. Some of you know who I am, some of you don't know who I am. Um, I've come a long way from who I used to be. I'm a reformed bad boy, I'm 21 years sober. Uh, all I try to do is benefit humanity every day. If I can save one person falling in a trap, no matter what that trap looks like, they're doing some process, W4 process, straw man process, SBC process, getting involved with an assembly, getting scammed by Anna, buying license plates from David Lester Strait, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If I can save one person and prevent that from happening, uh, then I've done my job for humanity. And that's my goal every day when I wake up, just that one person, somebody sending me a thank you, man, you saved me, you know, I didn't do this or, you know, I didn't do that or whatever. Um, Y'all can look me up, go watch my YouTube channels. I'm probably the most transparent person on uh, YouTube. You know, I gave out my cell phone number today twice on my noon live show. You know, who else is doing that on, on YouTube? Nobody. Um, Fearless Floyd, most of you know, I earned that in prison. That was given to me by my cellie, Michael William, Wayman Williams, because all the things that I was doing, he said, Floyd, they're going to make you disappear, man. You're fearless. I'm going to start calling you Fearless Floyd. That's how I got it. So I earned that. And I, it's tattooed on my upper back. And you don't wear something that says Fearless in Texas prisons without being able to back it up. Been there, I've done it. Been under investigation by the Alphabet Agencies. Most of you know the story. You can go watch my videos. I talk about it all the time. I'm very open and transparent about who I am, what I am, what I know, and my experiences. And I try to prevent people from wasting their time, money, and energy, whatever that looks like. So I brought this meeting together because in 2020, um, I was outside of a Lowe's and saw a license plate on a truck that said American State National. And I looked in Lowe's and I went, man, I'm never going to find this guy. So I'm going to have to sit here and wait. So I waited. I met Julian Marquez. He introduced me to the Texas State Assembly. I had no idea who Anna Von Wright was. Not a clue. Didn't even care. Got involved with the assembly. Lady you see on the screen, uh, Kim Reynolds, she was the state coordinator of the Texas State Assembly at that time. I got in, listened to some meetings, eventually got papered up uh, December 26th. 2020 uh, by Derek Gascon, uh, who was invited to this uh, Zoom as well. Uh, and um, 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 sorry. Uh, anyway, I got papered up by Derek Gascon. Uh, so after that, I started participating. I, I listened and I listened very carefully because I had to train myself because I was a writ writer, jailhouse lawyer in prison. And when I sat down to hear somebody tell me their story or after I read their record, start asking pertinent questions specific about how I was going to uh, strategy to attack the case. So I taught myself to listen very well. And uh, I listened to who all the movers and shakers and wallflowers and fakers were. And, uh, I, you know, I knew who was on a power trip, an ego trip and all that, and who really had the goods and who didn't, and who was motivated and who wasn't. So I decided I was going to, you know, be a little bit more vocal. And eventually I worked my way up to where everybody, you know, learned and respected, hey, this guy has a, uh, a legal background. He knows what he's talking about. It seems pretty smart and intelligent. They eventually elected me justice of the Texas State Assembly. Uh, upon uh, being elected to that position, I decided, okay, how much authority do I really have as this? justice of some assembly. And I started doing my research. That research led me into the discovery of the Colorado Nine, Bruce Davidson, who still is in Colorado State Penitentiary with a 38-year sentence for being elected a justice under Anna 
and going into a court and serving warrants on all the court personnel. They didn't take that kindly, as you can tell. And to this day, never once have I heard Anna on any of her media platforms ever once solicit for commissary money or for legal defense fund or appellate fund for any one of the Colorado Nine. Abandoned. And that's how Anna rolls. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, what, what, a, what am I in? Okay, I'm glad I just didn't just take off by you know, the seat of my pants and not do my research. So I did some more research and I was like, well, who the hell is Anna? Okay, I started listening to her, paying attention to her webinars, going back, listening, reading all her material. And I'm like, okay, awesome historian, great orator. I give her two thumbs up, man, more power to her. She's got that nailed. Running a cult, two thumbs up, got that nailed. Uh, to connect the dots for Anna real quick for you guys. I have a business, uh, a truth finder background report on her and her husband, James C. Belcher, James Clinton Belcher. She's a registered agent for Planned Parenthood Fund, LLC in New York, New York. If any of you uh, actually understand Planned Parenthood, you know who the creator and operator was. And that was William Gates's Bill Gates of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill's parents. Father was the founder. Mother ran the organization. Anna von Reich is the registered agent for that. Floyd, I've also you seen those this. Dots are more than welcome to connect them. I did. Hey, Floyd, I've also There's seen smoke, the paperwork. Be fire. That's all I can tell you. Um, she is admitted in her own book, her own postings on her website. She kisses the ring of the Vatican. She has a blood oath with the Pope. I'm not making any of this up. These are her own words. You can go look it up. Go listen to her webinar when people were, her, her donators were complaining about the way she was spending her donations. And she, I'm paraphrasing, but this is what she said. Uh, uh, all y'all complaining about how I spend your donations, I'll spend it any way I want. You can all go to hell. Absolutely, that woman said that. That's how much she cares about her membership. Now, any one of you, I beg anybody, please, Show me who the Federation of States is. Who are the members of the Federation? Is it Anna and James? Harold Hines? Is it this new guy, Hunter Aki, this banker, fake banker guy? Who exactly are these people? Uh, the other one, uh, Lorelei, whatever she was, that, that's a 100% alias name. She is a ghost. You cannot find her anywhere. I don't know what her real name is. She keeps the like mingling around. Now, I've invited some people here from Utah, Oregon, Texas, Tennessee, uh, Utah. See you guys. Uh, sorry about that. Um, all together, along with the Seeds of Wisdom team, the reason I brought this meeting together is uh, I've, I've been on a personal mission going through all that. You know, once I found out all that information about the assembly and of on rights, I stepped down a week later. I was like, man, this is nothing I want to be involved with. However, at that time, unbeknownst to me, Eric Dingus was running his own uh, parallel investigation into Anna. For those of you who don't know, Eric Dingus was Anna Von Reitz's hand-picked, appointed peacekeeping task force officer who traveled all across the United States, surfing people's couches, beds, rooms, cots, backyards, however he had to live, uh, trying to help the people out across the country that were in the different assemblies. I, you know, I, I can let you tell his stories and he, he's gone here and that's why he's here uh, to tell his story, his side of it. Uh, but anyway, in this parallel investigation, he was starting to see the same things I were. So I'm back channeling Kim Reynolds. He's back channeling Kim Reynolds. Kim Reynolds is back channeling Anne Von Wrights. Okay, I'll let you tell their sides of their story, what that looked like, because I wasn't privy to that conversation, but it existed. So we came to the conclusion, the movers and the shakers and the TSA, that we need to have a private backdoor closed meeting that nobody knows about. So we all arranged to meet in Dripping Springs, Texas, in a small little country chapel, uh, that our one of our uh, gracious hosts is on this Zoom right now. Uh, and we all met, sat down at a big table, and 
we all laid it out one by one. We all came to the determination that, uh, you know, this is probably something that we don't want to be involved in. We really don't need Anna Von Wrights to move forward. We don't even need the Texas State Assembly. Um, there was a lot of power struggle already, a lot of animosity, a lot of egotism. Uh, when we were there and when I left, I immediately left right after we left Dripping, Dripping Springs. That was enough for me. So heard enough. Um, so um, I tried to take some people with me in the Texas State Assembly and continue to educate them on, on how to continue down the road to, to privacy. That eventually fizzled out. Uh, I think a lot of people lost their momentum and their energy and their gumption to continue with the assemblies. That's why you see a lot of people, uh, you know, they just disappear because they don't want anything to do with it anymore. They were tarred and feathered, castigated by people that they thought they were peers and their friends, and they weren't. All through baseless accusations made by Anna Von Wrights. That's how she works. So there's many people out there just like yourself who just... They're no longer interested in anything that says assembly or national assembly or American state national or anything like that. They're just, they're burnt, they're fried. And they don't want anything to do with it. Uh, for, like I told you, it's my goal, take down Anna Von Wright. She has been on my radar for over two years. I have probably at least six, seven, eight videos all on Anna Von Wright. She dedicated her December, I think it's December 27th, 2021 Monday night webinar all to me, rebutting everything I said, totally 100% through her daughter under the bus, called her a prostitute, drug addict, worthless mother, uh, blamed everything on the public educational system that made her daughter the way she was. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Really? You threw your daughter under the bus and now you're going to blame the public education system for the way she turned out because you're her mom? Really? Uh, you know, all this is on the record documented fact of Anna Von Wright. If I swear to tell the truth, whole truth, enough but truth, so help me God at all times. I walk with honor, clean hands, and good faith. That's how I operate. If I don't have the answer, I don't know is my answer. I'm smart enough to surround myself by people that are more intelligent than I am. If I'm the smartest guy in the room, I'm in the wrong room, I need to go get in another room. I need to meet some new people. That's how I operate. I'm always constantly learning, I'm always constantly doing things, always. When I tell you I'm doing 10 things at once, boom, right here, here's a stack of books that I told you I'm publishing. These are Ann's books on trust. I'm a publisher now, a whole stack of them. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm doing a million things, but this, I'm being, I'm pulled to this. I want to, I want to expose these people who are ripping, uh, you know, the members of this community, and there's a lot of different members of what this looks like. You have people trying to get on the private side. You have the QAnons, the MAGA movement. You have the nationals over here. And I'm trying to bring all these people together in harmony. We have the RV people over here uh, with Seeds of Wisdom team. Now, I'm fixing to make your eyes pop, your jaws drop, shatter your being, okay? This is the scenario. Anna Von writes, hmm. All those people over there in the Seeds of Wisdom team. <laughs> well, they've got Bob Locke, hmm, who's their trust guru. <laughs> trust, uh, what an evil word that is. Let me invite Bob up to my house and show him my good graces and take him under my wing. And that way I'll have access to 100 plus people who are sitting on Dinar, Dong, Bolivar, Dollars, Rial, Rupia, all of that currency that they're fixing to become multi-millionaires, multi-billionaires. And who are they going to put their trust in? <clears throat> oh, yeah, Bob Locke, the guy who set up our trust, or we need to have set up our trust. And who is he going to recommend for our bank? His buddy, Anna Von Wrights. Everybody awake now? That's a scary thought. I want y'all to take that all heart. Everybody who's going to watch this recording is being recorded. I'm going to send it out to other people. Everybody who's watching this 
you will get a recording of this. Please hit me up. I'll send it to you, no problem, through Telegram. I'm not going to send it through email. Going through Telegram. And I want you to send it to God and everybody. I want you to send it to all the Seeds of Wisdom team, members, everything. If you'd like to see the proof, I can do a share screen right now and I can run through the truth finder for Anna Von Wrights and James C. Belcher. If y'all want to see it, y'all want me to send it to you, I will email it to you. You can always at any time reach me at the Fearless Floyd Show at yahoo.com. I'm on Telegram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube, Rumble, Bitchute, Odyssey, you name it. I'm there. I'm easy to get a hold of. My phone number, my cell phone right here, this phone, I carry at all times, 346. 971-6999. 346-971-6999. It is my mission in life, my goal to take down Anna Von Wrights and remove her from this whole entire movement, hopefully get her incarcerated and locked up for the rest of her life where she cannot prey upon the emotions, desperations of people that are really good at heart, who are looking to be have a better life, and some of them are looking to better humanity. And they're getting disillusioned, beat down. They're getting their property taken away from a perfect example. Terry Psalms, right-hand woman for Anna Von Wrights, got her property taken away from her for, through foreclosure, through Anna's Sign in America program that was a failure. Now, we'll all testify that it was an utter failure from its inception. And it was nothing but a legal tender process, which is very tedious because <laughs> I've done it. That's all Anna's doing. She's emulating everything that everybody else has done. Just go back and look at a record like I've done. Do your research. Go look at all her UCC filings. When you see those, she's going to see she was doing the SBC process the same time everybody else was. Anna is no smarter than anybody else. She just has an audience. She has everybody buffoon. She has everybody in a cult. I don't know why people are still sending her money and donations. I have no clue. Don't understand it. I know people who personally sent her money and she's- Hey, Floyd. Um, hey, Floyd, if I might interject real quick, um, you mentioned something um, about Anna, and I'd like to bring to everybody's attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on before you, before you proceed. As you oh, sorry, sorry. I'm bring most of you on to talk, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do Eric, because you were the peacekeeping task force officer that I have you on. We'll do um, Kim Reynolds next, because she is the state coordinator. So that will triangulate the story of the back channeling between Eric's parallel investigation and uh, Kim's own back channeling to Anna Von Wrights. So Eric, introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are, what's, you know, who you are, you know the deal. So Eric, I digress and it's your, your floor, go ahead. Sure, thank you, Floyd. Um, so um, yes, I my name is Eric Ingus. I used to be the coordinator for the peacekeeping task force. Um, for the American States Assemblies. And um, as Floyd um, so graciously um, you know, explained to everybody, I was working a parallel investigation to what he was doing. Of course, we didn't know that this was going on at the time until you know, sometime later. But um, what I was hoping to bring to light um, when I rudely interrupted, I apologize, Floyd. Um, so she wrote a book, it's called, You Know There's Something Wrong When? And if you'll look into this book, there is a globe that is a, in the middle of the book somewhere, a picture, and it has puzzle pieces. And in the center, the biggest piece, you'll see um, Edward G. Griffin's name, and then you'll see other people's name around it. Those are the people that she has compiled information from over the years. Um, she claims to be uh, you know, an astute researcher, but really the only thing that I've discovered is that she pilf pilfers other people's works um, for her benefit. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the investigation that um, I conducted. Um, Anna recruited me um, and it was really interesting to me because I, I really was unaware of who Anna Von Wrights was at the time. Um, I was approached by the then coordinator um, of the Texas State Assembly, um, Lee. And um, Lee reached out to me and told me that there was someone that would like to speak with me. Um, and it was Anna. And I was intrigued by it. Um, I've been a truth seeker for um, 26 years now. Um, I started a militia, a statutory militia in, in my county. 
Um, I've been, you know, doing outreach with law enforcement and talking with them for years and years and years. So I do have a little bit of a reputation in the movement um, as someone that can get results. And I think that this is how she found me. Um, but she did. She she offered me the position um, of peacekeeping task force coordinator without any paperwork or anything being done um, before the position was offered. And when I accepted, that's when she informed me that I needed to do this paperwork. And, um, you know, we went back and forth on this paperwork for quite some time. Um, and what I discovered in this paperwork is that if you complete it and you file it on the record, you're actually sus you're, you're surrendering your fiduciary power to your estate, to her. Um, and, you know, this is what we're trying to get away from is we've got a corporate system of government, a proxy government, um, that has already put themselves in as our fiduciary. We don't need fiduciaries. What we need is we need accountability and we need self-governance. We need to learn how to manage our estates and our affairs appropriately. Um, but like most of these gurus, she was not there for the benefit of the people. Um, so that made me very suspicious and it caused me to do a little bit of digging. And so I did some background checking on Anna and like Floyd articulated, she was, um, she did a tenure of Planned Parenthood. Um, she was also, um, someone who took a blood oath to the Vatican, to the church. And, um, the only blood oath that's available, um, through the Vatican that, that the church accepts is from Jesuits. Um, so those, those were big red flags for me. Um, and then as my investigation continued and started doing some digging, um, I discovered James Belcher and his background, um, which is also, you know, um, not what you would expect or want from, um, what she claimed to be the, I, I, the leader of you know, America, the owner and, you know, fiduciary of America, um, not somebody that I would want as, as a leader. And then my, you know, investigation continued further um, into Harold Hines. Now, Harold Hines is an interesting point in the investigation because at the time, I didn't know this, um, not until later, I found some things out about Harold. But in the beginning, I knew that Harold worked for Exxon Valdez. Um, I knew that uh, he was responsible for the oil spill um, that took place, the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Um, and I knew that he had been married to a woman who conveniently died in a plane crash. Um, and I knew that he had been um, looked into. And then um, as time progressed, I met a man um, and he was able to shed a little bit more light on Harold Hines. He had an association with him um, through this wife that had mysteriously died. And um, through that um, information share, um, I discovered that he was actually being investigated by the FBI. Now, this took my investigation to a whole new level because anytime you're looking at a group like this, a, a patronet group or a conspiracy group or anything that's construed by the de facto government as being domestic terrorism or a threat to homeland security, um, it's really probably not something that anyone should be concerned about until the FBI gets involved. Um, and the FBI, typically, when they get involved, um, it's because they feel that there's some sort of threat. So the fact that they had conducted this investigation into Harold Hines created a weak, a weak link in their chain of command. And so as I began looking into them and doing some digging, um, I, I, I made the realization that this is a Cointel Pro operation um, verbatim. Um, it, it's right out of the textbook. and. I started to encounter other people such as David Strake, um, who were affiliated or associated with Anna Von Wrights in a very, very loose way, so to speak. Um, and then as I started digging into these people, I started to find even more nefarious characters. So um, at the end of the day, what I discovered is that Anna is hell bent and intent on creating um, a situation where people that get involved in her organization lose their forward momentum, 
they lose all momentum and they lose all desire to want to be affiliated with any group of people that is trying to create this change that I think we're all looking for. Um, and, and, and as this has progressed, it's progressed into me. I, I haven't even ended the investigation. It actually keeps leading to new things. I keep finding new things all the time. Um, and right now, um, what I'm discovering is that not only is David Strait a Cointel Pro operative and also affiliated with Anna Von Wright, but that she was affiliated with the National Assemblies, with Destry. Um, and Destry had a really bad encounter with her as well, um, which he talks about on his website. And then, um, you know, through my contacts in the Republic of Texas, um, I've recently discovered that Tim McLean has become a disruptor inside their organization as well. And he also has a tight affiliation with David Strait, um, which uh, lends to the fact that he's probably also a Cointel Pro operative. In fact, I I'm at a point now where personally, I think if anyone is proselytizing themselves as some sort of guru in this movement, that they need to be examined closely because I know the fellow that was claiming to be the postmaster general, the guy with the goofy name, I can't even remember. Um, he actually was hauled off. Trout. I guess we lost Eric. Uh, say again, uh, Floyd, who? Trout is probably who he's talking about, S-T-R-O-U-T. Can, can, you, can you hear, can yes. you hear me now, Floyd? Okay, sorry about that. What was the last thing you heard? Strout. Is that who you're talking about? Charles Strout? S S no, straight. David Strait. David okay. Lester Strait. Okay. Yeah, but you're talking about somebody else. Go ahead. No, no. Oh, Tim McLean from America's Assembly. Or that guy, the postmaster guy. I was talking about how all these people. Yeah. So I, all these people um, <laughs> all have affiliations with each other. It's so Winston Strout. That's who you're talking about. Uh, no, he's got a no. He's a much weirder name, Guggen or uh, no? That's Kim Guggen. It's um, oh right. golly, Go doesn't matter. Carry on, thank you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, all of these people are affiliated with one another. In fact, um, this postmaster guy actually started with Anna, and he got in trouble um, and ended up in Guantanamo Bay. Um, so uh, the point. I'm trying to get to is that, you know, all of these people are a risk and all of these people have nefarious agendas, I believe. And, and, and I feel like it's in people's best interest to um, realize that and, and realize that by being a group or an organization, you're not really participating in your de jure republic you're not part of your de jure republic it's not there's no political test there's no religious test required to be a part of your republic and anybody that puts something in the way of you and your independence and your ability to have self-determination is a threat to your safety and is a threat to your freedoms and you need to examine that and 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 personally from what my experience has told me um, anyone that steps up as a guru in this nature is is not acting in your best interest. In fact, a lot of them are using you as guinea pigs. And I yield the floor. Floyd, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eric, would you like to uh, endeavor a little bit about your communiques between you and Kim during your own investigation or your experience at Dripping Springs? Um, I mean, if it doesn't, Tim? if it doesn't add to the narrative, that's fine. You mean with Tim McLean? What my experience has been no, with Tim McLean? Rights, because that's what we're that's what we're ultimately here for. Is right, Rights. right. Okay, that's what I thought. I for some reason I heard Tim. Um, okay, so yeah, so my experience in Dripping Springs, um, that was when I was removed from office. Um, you know, I, I had um, I had essentially done the work. I had created the infrastructure and the ability to be able to push forward with my mission, um, but nothing had happened inside the Federation of, Stra of States. And whenever I started to bring things into question and started to ask the hard questions, um, I was met with retaliation um, and, and, and um, slander from Anna. And, and it was incredibly 
harsh. I mean, it was <laughs> it's about as bad as you can get. I was accused of being FBI, CIA, Mossad. I mean, you pick a three letter agency and they threw that label at me. And to me, man, you might as well. I, I don't know. I don't know that there can be much worse than that. Oh, no, no, um, no. Oh, punch. She called you a dingus, which is a penis. So can't forget that. Oh. Well, my name is Dingus, you know, and I am kind of a prick sometimes, but you know, hey, that that's that's how low she went. She really she really published that. I, I promise you guys. She, uh, yeah, yeah. She went through his whole name. She did me as well. That's that's just her. her I guess one of her little proclivities that she likes to entail. So anyway, uh, so tell us about your back channels between you and Kim. Uh, and actually, one of the participants in this act, the baseless, 100% baseless accusation, and I can testify that because I happen to know the couple personally. I've gone to have lunch with them. Uh, you're not separating that couple. Uh, <laughs> that ain't happening. Uh, they're too good for each other, but she's on here. Uh, and I don't know if she wants to come forward and, and you know, uh, make a statement as well to incorporate and add to Eric's own testimony as well as Kim's because it all triangulates together. You know, I had no part of that. Uh, but basically, um, the current state coordinator for the Texas State Assembly, Kyle Worley, was on a uh, recording secretary meeting nationwide. And uh, basically created a baseless lie and Anna picked it up and run, ran with it, using it as ammunition to expel Eric from the, you know, peacekeeping task force, uh, as well as with all the other assemblies. Uh, yeah. and she just raised your hand. So Kim, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead and speak. If you'd like to jump in here. Okay. Um, no, Kimberly, there. Kimberly Wright. Oh, sorry. So yeah. I'll let, let, let Kim go first. The other Kim. Okay. Okay. Yeah, are you, first. okay, are you done, Eric? Yeah, 10 4. Okay, all right, Kim Reynolds. All right, tell everybody who you are, Kim, and uh, what position you held, and, and, and then tell your story. Hello. My name is uh, Kim Reynolds. Um, I'm a, a professional program and project manager, have like 35,000 hours experience. I work for a financial management company in San Antonio for 21 years. And uh, about the time that COVID got started in March 2020, I retired because I didn't want to have anything to do with that foolishness. So a few months later, my husband was uh, very interested in Anna's movement. We got all our paperwork in. Um, I was listening in kind of on the, the fringes. But I was it I was asked to um be the Texas coordinator by a few of the leaders within the coordinator because the existing coordinator was incompetent. And she was basically asked to leave because of dereliction of duty. And I won't go into the details because it's not important for this conversation. And, and that's Lee Lorelei? Lee Leroy. Lee Leroy, which is a 100% pseudonym alias that you cannot find anywhere on the internet. She has six different names. If you want them, I have them all. But it's that, again, that's not germane to this conversation. But these are the people that, you know, you're, you're looking up to that, you know, are, are moving the shakers that you're supposed to be following. And you have no idea who they really are. Yeah. That's so, so oh, anyway, go ahead, Kim. I have all this experience, administration experience, facilitation experience. Um, you know, so I went ahead and, and took the reins in August of 2020. We went from 12 papered up members to over 175 members in less than a year. We went from no recording secretaries to eight or nine recording secretaries just in, in three or four months, no, probably five or six months plus detailed documented procedures. I mean, we had it down and we were papering people up left and right all over the place. We had a, um, a treasure chest of about $15,000 just based on recording fees that we were helping people with. So we were, we were actually going somewhere and we were using that money to have face-to-face -face meetings and you know, paying for postage and, and trying to get everybody uh, papered up that had any interest. 
So um, on or about June 15th in 2021, I'd been at this just less than a year. I get this call about how Anna Von Reitz has just fired Eric and she is just lambasting him on multiple channels on Facebook, on uh, Telegram wasn't real popular back then, but Facebook was the primary channel. She gets uh, on her Monday night call, which is being played nationwide and talking about all of these things that he supposedly done and, and she has the proof. But whenever you ask Anna for any kind of proof, she ignores you. She doesn't have any kind of proof. You go out and look on her website. She has, to, to Floyd's point, she's a hell of a historian, if you can believe what she puts in writing. A lot of it is her own opinion, or to Eric's point, she's stolen from somebody else. Um, but she has a good stick. She, a lot of the stuff that she talks about, the birth certificate bond, um, uh, labor pawn with your social security number, all these things that the current de facto government is um, uh, stealing from uh, the public. It's all true, but she sprinkles enough in there about it being all true and some of the other things that she's done as far as getting your paperwork done. One of the things that she was very specific about was the red thumbprint goes to the right of your signature. It needs to be touching your signature. It's called your autograph, not your signature. Well, the red thumbprint is correct, but it should go on the left side and shouldn't touch your signature at all. So does that mean everybody that did a thumbprint next to their, their signature that their, their stuff is negated because they didn't do it right? Those are just some of the little things that she did to make it you know, it's it's believable on one hand, but on the other hand, it's just good enough to be bad. Um, and it's those little tricks that I have discovered since I left the assembly. So we found out that on about the 15th of June, 2021, that she had fired uh, Eric in a public forum without talking to him. I felt as a business professional that that was a uh, very unprofessional behavior. She should never have said those things. And then she goes in and, and calls him a penis because his last name is Dingus. And I've got that in writing somewhere. It's just ridiculous how unprofessional that she handled this. So she sends me this love note on June 15th to tell me all about Eric Dingus and about how he's um, called himself uh, the 007 uh, and is an, an affiliate of the British Crown. He suggested we commit our uh, our communications to a Canadian firm. I mean, she just goes on and on and on. And it's like, really? So I responded to her a few days later and I said, well, thank you for letting me know. And I'm being approached by some concerned Texas Assembly members that know Eric. And they're asking um, for some evidence that you can provide. And I asked her to do that and that, you know, please forward any document, uh, documented evidence that supports your position so I can put my Texas Assembly members' um, concerns to rest and support Eric's removal from participating in the Texas Assembly. Basically her email or her nasty gram about Eric, she was telling me to distance myself and toss him out of the assembly basically. So he doesn't have any kind of form. He doesn't have any kind of, of recourse um, to talk to people to try to right this particular wrong. And we're talking about slander and libel all over the place. So I, um, the next day I get this nasty gram from her saying that I threatened her. And this email is four sentences long. There are no threats. I've just asked her for information. And she also said that she explained the reasons why Eric was let go. And that instead of coming to us with this information, um, I'm not going to read the, the, read the whole thing, but she's, She's trying to convince me that she's given me all the information that I need and please do what she says. And I responded that, you know, 
as I understand, it's not my role um, and, uh, or is it my position to be satisfied or unsatisfied with her staffing choices? Eric was her staffing choice. And cause I didn't want to get in the middle of this. And I said, um, basically, um, the Federation, which is the organization she calls herself, has a prerogative to hire and fire staff as they see fit. Quite frankly, this is a distraction from the work that needs to be done and it's outside my scope. I prefer to uh, direct concerned assembly members to you unless you advise I should forward in inquiries elsewhere. Unless there's something more I need to know, I'll continue to carry on work at hand. Um, I just so disagreed with what she did from a professional perspective. But again, that's her choice. So because I didn't follow the brand, I didn't follow her advice. A few days later, she says, I haven't heard back from you under the, uh, regarding the association with Eric Dingus and resolution of those concerns. Therefore, I'm removing you as Texas coordinator effective immediately. So she fired me because I wouldn't agree with her. Um, and then she continued to lambaste with lamb, but she started lambasting me in public forums. And then after a period of time, she said, well, I'm sure Kim was a, a, a good administrator, but that was not the case when all this first went down and I could easily sue her for libel and slander. And she sent these emails to the Texas assembly members and all of the assembly members nationwide. And when that happened, to, to Floyd's point, the Texas Assembly um, fractured. And it's not been the same since. Um, they're not doing anything to paper people up. They're not doing any, they're not calling weekly meetings anymore. They're not training any individuals. And she did the same thing in California. She did the same thing in Michigan. When, when the states start being successful and they start getting memberships and they start rolling down the road and all of a sudden I went from 12 to 175 and then she comes up with this baloney and then all of a sudden Texas fractured. That's her modus operandi because they can't succeed. She can't let them. It's my opinion that she's doing work for three letter agencies, getting all these people stirred up. Um, and then she craters the whole organization for that particular state because she can't let them get too big um, because her controllers tell her she can't let them get too big. This, this effort can't go for very long. Um, and, and that's really why we don't have anything to do with her. We've kind of done our own thing. We have a small group of folks that meet uh, every other week to chat about new things that they've learned. Uh, Floyd is part of our group. Um, what did you want to say? I just, I would like to follow up with what Floyd started out with. This is my, my husband, Robert. And he was also on the Peacekeepers uh, Task Force with Eric, and he has a few things he wants to pass on. Hello, folks. Um, I just wanted to follow up. <laughs> um, what I, my position in the Texas Assembly was the treasurer, and my position with the Peacekeepers was the treasurer. Now, I've got about 40 years experience. I'm an old guy, by the way. Um, with two international CPA firms and a lot of background in accounting. Uh, Eric came to me and said, how much are we getting contributions from the people outside of the peacekeepers force? Because it all operated through contributions. So I started asking some questions. And next thing we know, Eric gets fired. Yeah, the question was asking was there an audit from Karen right. to identify where those funds were going that was coming through her website that was supposed to go to the peacekeepers and it wasn't. Terry and her group were pocketing the money. So anyway, that's all I needed to say because as soon as you start poking the bear, the bear tosses you out the door. Thank you. 
And Anna is okay as long as the people that are running a state's assembly are so unprofessional and don't know what they're doing. They're like Keystone cops. But when you get a professional folks in there that know how to run a business and know how to, to, to take steps forward and actually be successful, she does whatever she can to get rid of them. And uh, I yield. Kimberly, you want to follow up with that? Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Robert. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Kimberly. I was also in the Texas Assembly, and um, I'm I'm only here in this moment because if I can prevent somebody from getting involved with Anna Von Rights, I'm happy to do that. Um, I served as a recording secretary alongside um, Kim as the coordinator, and I also, my husband and I joined the assembly in early 2019. We started listening to the calls and listening to Anna. Um, we didn't do our paperwork right away. We were taking everything in. Um, so, but to be as brief as possible, um, prior to Kim taking over as the coordinator, it was very unorganized. And um, I would say, you know, not not going anywhere fast. And then when Kim took over, which was probably six months after we joined, things started to really shape up. And, you know, she has amazing talent in management. And um, we just, uh, my husband and I got involved. He also served as a justice for a while. And we were very motivated because we felt that we were doing something for Americans and for humanity to help um, people learn the truth um, about citizenship in this country and really anywhere, but um, specifically in this country. So we were very motivated to be of service and um, became involved and gave a lot of our time and energy. And um, Anna Von writes during that time, we were pretty hook, line and sinker. She's very, um, well-spoken about these topics. She's very convincing. And so we believed her. And then as we were very involved and putting a lot of our free time into helping others it, through the assembly, um, when we witness, and I speak for my husband and myself, he's not here right now, but when we witness what happened to Eric and then almost immediately how, uh, what happened to Kim, just as a result of her asking Anna to provide evidence. And I was certainly, along with some of the other people who were very involved in the assembly, some of the other recording secretaries, really great people. And we were just like, what is going on? She needs to, you know, you can't just slander someone. You have to, by law, by the real law, you know, there should be a trial or there should be something where this person is allowed to stand before a jury of peers or, you know, something in regards to what we're actually taught is correct. And it was clear that that wasn't going to happen, that Anna was not willing to provide evidence. And I watched as a recording secretary, having a lot of contact with Kim and being privy to those conversations. I was pretty shocked, honestly, um, by Anna's responses to Kim simply asking very respectfully, look, you know, people are concerned. They want to see the evidence. They want to know why, you know, let it, you're, you're making these outlandish claims. That's fine. But, you know, let's, let's, let's go about this the right way. And her response to Kim actually really shocked me. And immediately I was, I just said, wow, this is, this is, this is not okay. And this is not actually what it appears to be. This is actually a cult. And she is a cult leader. In a cult, uh, the leader is always very articulate and convincing. And uh, people are willing to follow them for that reason. And uh, But you are not allowed to question the cult leader. And that's what I saw right away with, with Anna. You were not allowed to question her. And Kim wasn't even really questioning her. She was just saying, hey, you know, people want some evidence. Uh, do something about this. And her response was not just negative. I would call it almost psychopathic. It her, 
I read the emails that her response, her responses to Kim's requests were outlandish. I mean, they were verbally abusive towards Kim and um, certainly towards Eric. So that was it for me. And then at that point, everything started to fall apart when she uh, fired Kim. And as people, as there was some backlash, you know, she just said she started, then she started slandering the whole Texas assembly. Um, I was being slandered. I mean, it was, it just became this massive um, circus and uh, kind of ridiculous. Uh, but it was, it was still very shocking. You know, here was this woman who, claims to be of the law and she's teaching all these really honorable things and the truth. And yet she just turned into an absolute psycho monster um, with no skills whatsoever. I mean, Kim called her unprofessional. It was, that's putting it mildly. She was not just unprofessional. She was uh, psychotic. She was verbally abusive to people. She was dragging anybody and everybody she could um, on social media down, including Kim. And I, I know Kim and they're still there. Her, her and Robert are still good friends of ours. And these are very upstanding people. And, um, the whole thing was really shocking. So there's no, there's nothing anybody could say to me at this point to ever redeem Anna von Wright's in my eyes. I have seen her for who she is. She's very articulate. And I would warn anybody to walk away from anything she is offering or dangling in front of you. I think she's a complete fraud. Well, I don't think it, I know that she's a complete fraud with whatever she is offering. And she's constantly dangling things in front of people. As Kim had said, there's a lot of truth in what she teaches, but that's how cult leaders operate. It's also how con artists operate. You know, they're, they're smooth talkers and they offer you a lot of truths to suck you in. Um, but she's never, never come up with, as far as I know, any of the promises that she's made. And I've watched a few people, um, the few people that I've had contact with after leaving the assembly, one young, lovely young woman, uh, her and her husband that I had helped uh, do their paperwork with, were in the process of losing their home because of what Anna was teaching, not because they couldn't afford to pay their mortgage, but because Anna had convinced her husband that if they stopped paying their mortgage, they could go about things according to her plan and they would then own their home outright. And they were in the process of not only had they been foreclosed on, um, their house had been sold in foreclosure. And this poor woman with young children was waiting for any day, the sheriff to show up at their house it was devastating to hear. And um, I think that, and that was around the time that Terry Som, who, as Floyd mentioned, was Anna's right hand woman uh, through a lot of her adventures in her work, um, that I became aware that Terry had been arrested because her house was in foreclosure. And they came and they carted her off to jail. So I don't think that Anna knows what she's doing. I think she keeps people convinced that she knows what they're doing. She keeps carrots dangling in front of them so that they are willing to give them give her money. And when she fails, she blames it on somebody else. Oh, well, they didn't do what I told them to do. Um, so- That's how she justified the Colorado Nine. I've heard her speak on them. She said, well, I told them not to do that and they did it anyway. Oh, well. Yeah, and she does that with-, with um, everything. And I, I really have yet to hear of anybody who has, um, you know, really succeeded in some way in court or, um, you know, there were, there was a couple in the assembly when we were there and, and the guy was, had been in jail and was dealing with um, a court battle. And, you know, Anna had convinced them to give her money and she was going to you know, help them out. And, and they just bought it all hook, line and sinker. And when the, when the assembly fell apart, the people that were really invested in on it, and we were one of them, but there were a lot of people who just, you know, they didn't want to accept that Anna was not who she said she was. So just true to form in a cult, 
if you go against the leader, all of us who started questioning her, and there were several of us who started, you know, in the group meeting saying, well, look, you know, we just want to have a trial for Eric and we want, we want some just, you know, the, the law and some order here. Um, we were yeah, we were due process. Thank you. We were immediately ostracized from that community. And um, the people who remained, I mean, everything just fell apart. They seemed like good. A lot of them seemed like good people to me. But when I went back a few months later, after being sick in the hospital with COVID, um, I went back to get reimbursed for a lot of my expenses as a recording secretary. And um, there was no order. Um, I don't know who ended up with the thousands of dollars that had been donated to the assembly and all the money that we took in doing paperwork. But, uh, you know, they they wouldn't even reimburse me for my postage stamps uh, for the well, not postage stamps, the amount, a lot of postage that I had spent mailing documents and such. Um, so, you know, it just it, it just went so sideways after having this amazing group of people who were genuinely um, wanting to help humanity, wanting to help Americans and move forward with just doing the right thing. And I don't even know, I've, I've heard they don't even have meetings anymore, like Kim said. So here we are. I just, I just came on here to say, look, you know, firsthand experience. Anna is a very smooth talker. I believed her um, I was very impassioned by her ability to speak about all of these things. And I thought we were doing something great. You don't need Anna Van Rights in any way, shape or form. Um, we have learned, those of us who left the assembly, we are constantly learning. We get together, um, some of us, we get together and we talk about what we're learning along the way. Floyd is always doing great work um, teaching on his channel. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a lifelong process really to learn what we're doing here and to learn what it really means to be an American and stand on the land and stand in truth. It's an ongoing process, but don't, don't look to Anna Van Rights. There's a lot of other resources and it's really not that complicated. I think that Anna very deliberately complicated the process, made the per paperwork much more tedious than it needs to be. Floyd can probably st speak to that really well. Um, but there's a lot of different avenues. I've seen different people going different routes in this regard, in regards to not paying taxes or in regards to dealing with the law. And, um, you know, it's, it's really a self-learning process. Stay away from, as Eric said, stay away from anybody who is a self-proclaimed guru in this regard. And they tell you they have the only way. I think Floyd is one of the few people who actually has a channel who's just giving great information. He's interviewing people and um, giving people the opportunity to really learn and then share what he's learning along the way. But he does his best not to um, make claims that of, of things that he's, you know, can't uh, prove or hasn't tried out himself. So if you're going to follow anybody, follow Floyd, because he's, he's not going to dangle a carrot in front of you. Stay away from Anavon rights. Um, just a, a couple more things about Anna. Mm -hmm. We've told you, and, and, and we're not the only storytellers here. I can give you names of probably 50 different people who would tell you the same thing, mm -hmm. that were part of the Texas Assembly, part of the Assembly in California, part of the Assembly in Michigan and Wisconsin, that she did this over and over and over again. But uh, let's let's take another leap forward. About the time I left, she brings on this guy named Hunter. He's from Hawaii, and his uh, his last name is like three or four syllables I could never pronounce. But you, um, he AKI. Okay, uh, Akai. Good segue um, into him. Thank you. Yeah. So Anna has no um, credibility with us. So she brings on this guy, Hunter, who's all about the 528 megahertz love frequency. And he's got a, a nice show. He's got some good video. He's got supposedly this application that you could go online and look at. It's a pyramid screen, uh, uh, scheme in my mind to where people put money in and, and it never comes out. 
My point is if Anna Von Wright's is trustworthy, the person that she brings on to be the bank for her organization, which is Hunter Akai, is also untrustworthy. Do not trust these people. And if you put your money in, especially if you've got big RV money going, you may never see it again. Your choice, we're not going to tell you what to do or how to do it or where to put your money or make your investments or, or how you're going to solve that problem. But I'm telling you, in my opinion, don't go near her or her bank because you're going to um, be very, very sorry. I yield. Thank you, Kimberly and Kimberly. Eric, jump on real quick. Yeah. Yeah, Floyd. Um, yeah, I wanted to um, I wanted to address um, Hunter, actually, um, because so part of my responsibilities as the peacekeeping task force coordinator was to ensure that we had the infrastructure in place to be able to be what we were presenting ourselves as as a legitimate form of Republican government. And in order to do that and be recognized, one of the things that the government has to do is offer government services. Um, so Anna, um, had expressed to me that she wanted to establish, um, what she was calling at the time, um, a blue dot bank, um, which was essentially a credit union for American state nationals. And so I began doing research into different people, um, to try and find the right fit for what we were doing. And what I soon discovered was that there was no one specific person that was going to be the right fit for what we were doing because what we were doing had never been done before and we were gonna need um, the opinions and input of, of many. And um, whenever I discovered Hunter, I explained to Anna that he was a stepping stone, that what he did was he brought us into an international banking community in which there were contacts that we vitally needed to be working with and it would not be him. I said, uh, you know, I explained to her, the one benefit that he brings to the table is he has already been able to negotiate contracts with credit card companies like Visa and MasterCard. And that was going to be something that was going to be vitally important to what we were doing. Um, and, you know, as the relationship um, started to grow, um, I discovered some things about Hunter that were not, um, not apparent in the beginning. And I immediately brought them to Anna's attention. Um, but she said that because he was whatever vibrating at whatever frequency that she had confidence in him and yada, 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 just because the old system said he was bad didn't necessarily mean he was bad. But um, the guy is definitely not what he is portraying. Um, he is um, a very good actor and, and he definitely is after other people's money. Um, for sure. He's got an international investment scheme that he's running. Um, and, and several other people that were affiliated with Anna were very shady. There was people in California, um, you know, the alias thing was a very common thing among people that were in her inner circle. Um, so again, just with all of these things, err on the side of caution and um, really just focus on your own individual education. Um, before you do decide to take any action, make sure you do plenty of research. I yield. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, Daryl, you have your hand up. Yes. Uh, Eric said something that. Introduce that, yourself, please, to everybody. <clears throat> pardon? Introduce yourself to everybody so we all know uh, who you are and where you come from and what you're I'm Daryl Gilson, and I'm from Oregon. Um, I started with the Oregon Assembly about a month and a half after it was formed, actually, in 2019. Um, since then, I Bobby Graves was the coordinator at the time, and he didn't have good connection, electronic uh, connections, so he asked me to be co-coordinator which i started doing and my history i started in the hawaii assembly years ago 
and actually was in contact with Destry at that time. And Anna came out with this big uh, Michigan Assembly bad. So we followed Anna instead of Destry. And anyhow, I ended up in Oregon as the coordinator for a while. And then all of a sudden, I was informed that the Federation hired the coordinators, that the assemblies had no uh, place in picking the coordinator. And at that point, when I was informed that I was an employee of the Federation, I resigned immediately and told them that I would not be an employee of the Federation and I would refuse to take a foreign title from a foreign person, which is what I considered Terry Salmon and Anna to be at that time as handing out uh, foreign titles. And I would have no part in that. So I resigned as coordinator. Anyhow, that's just some of my history. But Eric made a statement just recently, well, he made it on this Zoom, that the paperwork that Anna had us fill out uh, handed over uh, her being the fiduciary. And that's not something that was ever talked about or explained and so <clears throat> i'd like to hear more about how the paperwork makes her a fiduciary because i need to correct that but the thing that i came you know as i studied what she was saying and how things worked i asked her who is in the federation and how do you get to be part of the federation and then she come along saying that the federation controlled the assemblies and i replied to her that's not possible because if there was a federation it was formed by the people and if it was formed by the people it could not control the people the people control the federation and then I said, and as far as James Belcher being a hereditary head of state, I said, that's not possible because the when we did the Declaration of Independence, we kicked all the hereditary stuff out of this country. And it was only by election that you could hold an office in this country. And there was just many things like that. And every time I ask her for any kind of proof, because she's got like 4,000 and some publications on her website, and she's got all these claims of she sent letters to this one or that one or the other one. And I ask her for a, show me a green card from the post office that you ever sent anything to anybody. And of course, like everybody knows here, I got called names, I got slandered, I got, you know, just yelled at, basically. But I, I am really interested to hear Eric tell me how the paperwork makes her a fiduciary. I yield. Yeah, Daryl, I'd be happy to. Um, so first, I need to explain some fundamentals um, that mo they escape a lot of people, especially people that are been into the assemblies, and that's where they've been getting a lot of their education from. Um, first off, status correction. You are born in one of the several states. Therefore, you are by default a national. Secondly, when you become of the age of accountability, and you become a property owner or part of the body politic, 
you are by default a state citizen. When you enter into contract with the federal government, now you become a US citizen. And that's done via the birth certificate, social security, marriage license, driver's license, any licensure, any right that's been converted into um, a privilege and had licensure or fee issued as a result of having the privilege. Um, that, that's done by contract. So the two statuses that Anna is proselytizing about people needing to correct are by default yours. And another fact of law is, is that political self-determination is a God-given right. In fact, all self-determination is a God-given right. Thereby, no one shall ever stand between you and self-determination. So the political subdivisions are your choice at any time because they all belong to you. Everything in our reality is a creation of man except for nature itself. Therefore, we have the burden of responsibility of, of control, management. And so these statuses are yours to claim at any time. I can go into three different jurisdictions anytime I choose, and I can function just fine in those jurisdictions. I don't ever have real problems. Um, so status correction. That's a misnomer, it's not necessary. What is necessary is a simple declaration because as Americans, the document that we stand on is the Declaration of Independence. And it outlines that it is necessary that we make a declaration and give the reasons for such declaration. So really that's all that's necessary to separate yourself from the corporation is a simple declaration on the record. Now you can do other things and I'm not gonna get into all that because I wanna focus on the answer to your question. And this is all part of the answer. So when you start to do this paperwork and you start to give your allegiance to something known as an American state assembly or a national assembly or whatever you wanna call it, you are, um, you are giving yourself um, into that. You're, you're actually swearing allegiance to it. Um, and when we swear allegiance to things or we take oaths or we make affirmations, um, well, there's consequences for that always. And if you'll actually go back and you'll read um, the paperwork in the 928 bundle, there is a document in there that states that you are agreeing that Anna Von Wright's and the Federation of States is acting as the fiduciary authority. And when you give your allegiance, no, that's not right, Kim? No, there, that's not right at all. The 928 documents, there's none of them that mention Anna Von Wrights. There's none of them that mention the Federation. There's none of, of them that mention any type. The only thing that might be close is a membership agreement that you would sign to the Texas Assembly or the Oregon Assembly. And when you decide that you don't want to participate, then you send that information, uh, that document that you signed and you write void, 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 void all over it. And you nullify that document in your membership. None of the 928 docs have any reference to the Federation and Anna Von Rights in any way, shape or form. Okay, my apologies. I must have been thinking about other paperwork. But again, the membership um, would create the vulnerability because the assemblies by Anna's definition are created and controlled by the Federation of States. Um, so by default, you would be giving your allegiance to the Federation of States through the States Assembly. So that would also accomplish the same thing. Um, you have to forgive me. I've looked at so much paperwork over the years and I haven't even actually Hang examined on. the 928s. And yeah, yeah, Eric, let me interrupt you for a minute. The paperwork is not uniform across all state assemblies uh, for- uh, And that's also very true. Yeah, and I've looked at some of the packages. So some of it's different. And when they talk about the 928 package, that was before I came into the assembly and it was a different package from the one that I did in uh, 2020. So it's changed and it's, you know, it's Anna, I, you know, you would think that if you're trying to create something, you have a federation with this legal law firm, whatever the hell it's called, that there would be a uniform structure like the uniform commercial code for all the assemblies. So the paperwork would be uniform. It all be the same. 
the inform function. It can be scanned, you know, where a scanner can read it, but you know, it's not that way because we know from the testimony that we're receiving here how it really works and why it really works. And then all it is is a function for Anabon rights to enrich yourself, grifting off the uh, predatory nature of other people. Um, I hate to hear that. Um, I want to kind of carry on. I want to get into some other of these, like Don, I'd like to hear his testimony because that's where the real uh, heartbreak is going to come in when you start hearing these stories about the uh, the financial losses that some people have suffered here. And uh, I want to thank them very much for coming on and sharing their own experiences with uh, with us and with the world, uh, because this needs to stop. And, you know, when you hear the numbers, you're, it's, you're going to be astonished. And don't think for a minute that he's the only one out there that this has happened to, because uh, I guarantee you there's other people who have uh, made the same type of investment going all in, believing, the, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid. And uh, this is where we're at. And this is this video is for all of those people, all the people that we can prevent from doing the same thing, especially with this RV coming up. It's very expectant. People are calling it out for this weekend, maybe next week. Um, so there's going to be a lot of really wealthy people out there who will be easily hoodwinked. And I think the Seeds of Wisdom team knows that. They're very gullible. They rely on every word that you say. I wake up every morning to Mark Z, Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock, and then again on Saturday. That's who I wake up to, turn him on. 10 minutes, I'm awake, and I catch the news. That's how I start my day. And then I'll come down here and start answering emails, turn him on my second laptop and listen to him. And I listen to everything he says. And when I catch him when he's out of line, I'll text him and correct him and he'll correct himself on air. That's how close I am with Mark. And uh, he had Bob on there today. That's the second time I've caught Bob promoting Anna Von Wright's. His, her name should never come out of anybody's mouth that's associated with the uh, Seeds of Wisdom team, anybody in this movement. She is persona non grata. She's only out for herself. Her record is loud and clear. I can't, you know, and I say this all the time about her. I've beat the horse, the dead horse, so badly that there's nothing left to beat. Everything I say, I'm just repeating the same thing I've said year after year after year. I do an annual video. Because I was told by him when I was in the assembly, hey, Anna's creating a bank. We need a standalone brick and mortar bank. I went out because I was doing real estate and I found a, a empty commercial bank, two story with, I think I had 14 drive throughs Perfect. On a major thoroughfare, right? On the, uh, on the 610 loop here in Houston, Texas. And I told Kim about it. She's, well, we're not ready for it yet. Well, are we creating a bank or not? I never heard another thing about it. So after I left, I started doing videos. Is the bank there yet? Do you have your debit card yet? And that has changed over the years. Originally, it was supposed to be a debit card that, that was uh, tied to your Setui View Trust that you could pay off your bills with. And that was it. You know, you couldn't go out and buy Rolls Royces and Ferraris and mansions and yachts and be Elmer J. Fudd. But that was the, the the original deal. And then it changed. And they, she brought in this Hunter guy. And, you know, everything just has gotten real sketchy since then. So with that segue, Don, are you ready? And would you like to present your testimony? There you there, go. I'm ready. I had to unmute myself. Thank you. Introduce um, yourself, please, to everybody, and uh, and then carry on with your story. Thank you. My name is Don Baker. I'm with the Oregon Assembly. I've been with the Oregon Assembly a couple of years, and uh, I, that's sort of, uh, I got introduced to Anna Vaughn Wrights through that, and she it was kind of refreshing to find somebody who could talk about the um, the kinds of things that were going on in the government that were taking our freedoms and responsibilities away rather than giving them to us. So um, that was that was good. And I, I uh, learned quite a few things from Anna. But um, after a while, I even got introduced to Hunter Aki. Uh, 
and he seemed to have um, a banking solution, but it had some um, very unique kinds of uh, ways of describing it. it was going to be completely transparent, was not going to have any usury or deal with um, interest. It was uh, for everybody. Um, and was also planning on using what's called lawful money. And, you know, this group is, is uh, already familiar with what that is. Anyway, so I put a small amount into it. And um, that was uh, back in May or June last summer. <clears throat> um, after a while, you know, I'm a I'm a 73 year old guy, and so I, there was a uh, an IRA that I had a little bit of money in, and so I pulled that money out and was going to put it into something else. And lo and behold, a message came from Terry Som that was supposed to be shared with all of the assemblies. Can I do a screen share? By any chance, I'll just uh, I'll just tell you what. Yes, no, no, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Let me give you uh, privileges. It it should automatically be there. No, it's not. He's a co host, oh. and there you go. All right, Don, you can share screen. Okay, how do I determine which screen to share? I've never um, tried this before. Yeah, you just click the sh screen share, and it's going to pop up a bunch of window panes, and you just click. Double click on the one you want to open up. Click on the right one. Uh, shoot. We got a bunch of tabs. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay. I think I see it. Double click on that. There you go. Ah, okay. So this came out September 19th, and it was to be shared with all of the assemblies. And uh, I'll just go through. The banks are preparing for a massive bail-in program and restricting withdrawals. Um, close all accounts and withdraw as cash to the extent possible. Only money we've already captured in global will be safe. Nothing insured will be safe. It's the insurance collapse that's pre precipitating the bank collapse. Peter is robbing Jesus to pay Paul. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but uh, <laughs> the she goes on, the Federal Reserve notes are evidence of their debts, so they're seizing them and seizing accounts denominated as Federal Reserve notes in all insured banks. That includes credit unions that offer insured accounts. If they are insured, they are not indemnified. The insurance companies are failing because of the strain of the vaccination death toll worldwide. All those life insurance claims are being disallowed and the insurance companies are losing in litigation. The banks are not willing to go on with the charade without insurance. The best thing, the best thing, this is all the fear point, but now she's gonna offer a solution. She says the best thing, would be the would be cash. And if you need to transact money orders, we will be hitting the post offices all over the country, buying mon money orders in various amounts. It looks like that will be the only visible way to get things done in the interim. And that is why the Pope insisted that all liquid assets be in the Vatican Bank by September 30th. He anticipates the drawdown of the money orders, which are backed in gold. We have maybe 10 days to act. So her advice is get your money out of the bank. And I just had this kind of windfall, under $450,000 from, um, from the IRA. And I thought, where can I put that where it's safe? I've been thinking about that. Uh, Anna's advice is to put it in the only safe 
place possible. Put it in global. Only money we have already cashiered in global will be safe, says Anna. And, and just for clarification, Don, that is Hunter's bank, right? Well, I certainly thought so at the time. Yeah. And, and it it made sense, right? Um <clears throat> So I, I put some more money in Hunter's bank, quite a bit. And I wasn't the only one. In fact, there's three people from the state of Oregon where uh, the total amount is like $331,000 that went into Hunter's credit union and bank. And Hunter said, you know, this, this will go straight into his credit union as soon as it's open. And the grand opening is scheduled for July 4th. It's like six, seven weeks away. We don't even have two months to wait before this happens. Um, now, in his message that Terry sent out, said we have 10 days, maybe, to act. So I took this seriously and went along with a bunch of this advice as did many other people, because this went nationwide. So who knows how much money people, the dog is getting upset. <laughs> who knows how much money nationwide was collected by Hunter? Um, the last I heard, there was uh, maybe three, $4 million. You know, spread about around people in the United States. Um, this, uh, this, so I made my moves, as did several other people within the ten days, and uh, nothing happened. There was no, there was no banking collapse. There was no insurance company collapse, and. 10 more days passed. And what happened is we got a message from Anna Von Wrights. Um, she said, and, and I could actually uh, share this screen again, but I'll, uh, if it's not up there, is it? Yes, we can see it. Oh, okay, there's her picture there. She says this evening, this is on October 8th, I'm able to positively assure everyone that we have avoided a banking and insurance industry collapse. Wow. We have not been able to keep the real estate bubble from bursting, and the related fallout from that could mean that up to 30% of the workforce in the U.S. and Europe will be out of work for some time. Uh, if you can read the the screen, it says, uh, "This is this is when I realized the sting. I realized that I'd been had." And so, um, things you know, we were scurrying around, and I eventually, you know, got around to putting in um, a transfer request, a, a wire transfer request from Hunter. And when I figured out how it could be done and got some information about how to do it, uh, to get most of my money back. Um, and I filed that with Hunter's bank on, or yeah, with Hunter at, on December 5, as did, I guess, a whole bunch of other people. Hutter got upset about that, but um, I, you know, called him in a couple of days and said, "Hey, I really need this because of the family emergency. Because I, I wanted to be able to help other people when you know some of these things are happening." And he said he would return my money, and that was, I believe, on a Friday, a Thursday or Friday. So, knowing that. A wire transfer can sometimes take a couple of days. I waited till uh, 
Tuesday in the next week and wrote Hunter back and said, hey, you know, did you do it yet? Pretty much. And um, he wrote me a reply that said that he'd talked to Anna and I don't need the uh, screen share anymore, Floyd. That he had talked to Anna and they know that some evil force has caused a bank run on their banks and um, and they have to start an investigation to get to the bottom of this. So he recommended I keep my money in his bank and I wrote him back of course and said, no, I choose not to, I need the money. And that was, uh, we had a couple of emails back and forth and that was before the end of December, December 20th. And I have not heard from Hunter ever since then. However, Anna claims she talks to Hunter every day. And she would, uh, you know, send my information and give him a poke and he'll be responding to it. He And he did. He, he uh, told Anna that he didn't have time to call me because he's so busy. Uh, but um, he... He didn't call me. And that was last December in 2022. I haven't heard from Hunter since then. I've heard from Anna many, many times because she has uh, mentioned me in many of her letters. As she has other people in the state of Oregon. And uh, anybody who's read any of her recent articles probably... 80% of them is devoted to dragging Oregon through the mud. <clears throat> Anna and Hunter were working together on this. Anna said, or Hunter told me specifically, you know, he talked with Anna, and that's why I'm not getting my money back. Uh, they're in cahoots on this. It's like they planned it a long time ago. They have banking documents where Hutter's Global Family Bank and Hutter's Trade Bank and Anna's banks are also called Global Family with slightly slight differences in the name. And uh, they have agreements that there's, they will share all of their functions from taking deposits and sharing accounts and, and software, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anna says she has nothing to do with Hutter's banks. She, uh, what do you call it? She distances herself from him legally, but um, she supports him a thousand percent and says she speaks with him almost every day. Uh, I think we have a case. We have a case here for a um, collusion from the two of them to scam people out of money. And a third of a million dollars is from Oregon and who knows how much in other places across the country. I think we should go after her and Hunter. That's about it. Thank you, absolutely. Uh, Eric, you have your hand raised. You'd like to add to that? Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to ask Don, um, you know, have you and, 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 you know, I realize that we're, you know, trying to live outside of a system um, that we don't that we don't agree with and is that un and is unlawful. But have you considered filing a report with the FBI? Because, um, you know, I'm going to tell you from my firsthand experience, I actually sat down with the FBI and had lunch with them in Cheyenne, Wyoming, of all places. And I spoke with the gentleman who's in charge of the Patriot Movement investigative team. And he gave me three warnings. He said, stay away from the UCCs, stay away from trying to take people's bonds or, or come against people's bonds and be very, very careful and stay away or stay away from Anna Von Wright. And uh, so they're quite aware of who she is and what she's doing. So I'm just curious, 
if you've considered maybe filing charges with her uh, through the de facto government just to see what happens. I yield. Eric, that's a really great question. I went to the FBI and I gave them my claim. <clears throat> and I was basically told right then and there, before they even did any investigation or looking into it, um, they said it's not it's not a big enough claim to to uh, even think about. They're looking for multi billions of dollars and and hundreds or thousands of people, and I was just one guy showing up at the FBI headquarters in Portland, Oregon. And uh, they basically told me to pound sand. But I had everything on a thumb drive. I had all the attachments to my claim. It was it was uh, almost 200 pages of information. And they grudgingly took it from me. Because, and, uh, after uh, a few calls back over the next few weeks, they said they put it into their system and they really need more people to come forward in order to even think about doing something. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, you went to uh, you, you went to a headquarters office, so you got Joe Blow agent, um, and and I can appreciate their position on that, and, and that's probably very true. They're looking for big fish. Um, however, I will say that um, I do still have a contact um, with Nate. Um, I have his email address and his phone number, and he's the gentleman that's in charge of that division. Um, you know, maybe I could uh, reach out to him and see if he might be interested in taking your information, because I know that he has been watching her for quite some time and possibly has just been waiting for her to make the wrong mistake, because she's if she is not, in fact, a Cointel Pro operative, um, then she would be vulnerable to prosecution by the FBI, um, because the FBI is the one that runs the Cointel Pro operations. That's their that's one of their programs. So um, I think it might be worthwhile to at least try. Um, if, if you're interested, I'd be happy to help. Hey, Eric, why don't you take Don's phone number and his email and maybe give him your phone number? Um, so that you guys can keep in touch. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'm, I'm texting him in the private chat my contact information right now. Thank you, Kim. I gotta remember how to do it though. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of other people on here. I don't know exactly who all of you are personally. Some of you are probably on the other Oregon meeting, but I didn't get to interact with you, each of you individually. So if anybody else has anything they'd like to add to this, uh, their own personal experiences, try to keep out third party hearsay. I'm trying to keep this you know, clean on topic. Other people are gonna be seeing this. You're gonna be able to share it with other uh, assembly members, former assembly members, because you know, like ourselves, there are some really, really good people out there have a good heart and, and we're actually, you know, trying to move in a positive direction and just got a, caught up in the uh, entanglement of Anna's web of conspiracy lies and uh, just vampiristic behavior to uh, waste everybody's time and energy. Does anybody else have anything to add? We'd love to hear it. This is Bill. May I? Yes, Bill. Absolutely. Yeah, um, uh, I'm uh, in on the Oregon uh, group as well. Um, my story is uh, just exactly like Don's. Um, I decided to put a chunk of money into the bank because of the story and also because I'd heard for years that there was going to be bail-ins, and I did expect it to come along eventually. But since there was multiple sources suggesting that that was coming soon, not just Anna, but uh, so I put some money in and uh, actually about 90% of my uh, retirement, uh, you know, discretionary funds. So quite a bit, it's almost $200,000. Um, and then I 
uh, applied for the return of, you know, wire transfer. And I got a similar thing back that at first that he was going to send it back. And uh, I have sent two internal emails on the website to say, is there some update on these? What's going on? Those were quite a while ago. Um, so, so far, nothing. And I haven't had any communication with Hunter. And I, I did not go to the FBI. I didn't do anything with it. I still log in every day and look at the account. But that's about it. I yield. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate it. Thank you for adding to that. Um, some of you, you know, definitely in Oregon, y'all know the story, but for those of you who do not know the story, and Kimberly Wright mentioned Terry Psalms. Terry Psalms to this day is still Anna Von Wright's Monday night buffer gatekeeper on the webinar. Let me tell you the story about that. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier about the Sign in America program, Terry Psalms was all in. Nice piece of property she had, nice house. Um, she quit paying her mortgage. Two and a half years later, of course, the county foreclosed on it, sold it. Uh, the owner came to take possession. She still inhabited the house. The sheriff had to come and uh, extract her out of the house. And uh, so the new owner was, you know, going to go back and, you know, rehab it and I guess put it on the market. When he came back later, it was rehabilitated. And he didn't know who was in there. So, of course, he talked to the neighbors. And it's like, yeah, she, they're back in there. So he called the sheriff's department. Sheriff's department came out, looked at all the cars in the driveway. All the cars in the driveway had license plates out of uh, Las Vegas from Max with American State Nationals on there. So they did two and two, and they figured out, oh, okay, so they're back in there. So they tried to just knock on the door and get her out. She wouldn't come out, wouldn't answer the door. So they brought in an anti-personnel vehicle with the SWAT team, full ninja gear, with the helmets and riot gear, and uh, literally blew the front door off the house to extract Terry, uh, a couple other inhabitants, I don't know who they were, found a firearm, and uh, that's how they extracted Terry Psalms out of her home. After going through all that, following Anna's Sign in America program, she still this to this day, this is how drunk on the Kool-Aid she is. She still, you know, believes Anna, still out there fronting for Anna, uh, still playing the little ladies. I don't really understand um, why she would do that. It's insanity. Um, I would just be livid if it happened to me. So it just doesn't make sense. I don't understand if she's getting a kickback from Anna that, you know, why would she just use that to pay off her house and move on or get a new residence or something? So, uh, you know, two and two just don't equal four with Anna at all times. So that just gives you the gravity of some of the hold that this woman has on people and their livelihood. And it's very depraved and sick and wicked and it's evil. And, you know, as Kim alluded to, you know, the, there's a connection. There's You can connect the dots to Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation very easily with Anna. Is she controlled by somebody like George Soros or the Clinton Foundation or the Kissinger and Associates or Booz Allen Hamilton or any one of the multiples of the military industrial complex as well as the intelligence industrial complex for the United States of America? We don't know. We don't have any idea. Um, what we do know is everything is suspect about Anna. Um, now this whole thing with the bank, uh, basically swindling out of, you know, people's life savings, uh, at such a, uh, late stage of their life and such a horrid economy that we're currently going through with, uh, inflation, interest rates raising, you know, almost monthly. Um, yeah, I really feel for you guys. And I don't want to see anybody else hurt or harmed by this type of behavior. Hey, Floyd. Uh, yes, ma'am. Derek, uh, I think it's Derek Gascon is raising his hand. Right. I know he's made a couple of comments on the chat. Derek, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple things about uh, the whole Anna Von Wright's deal and specifically the bank because the- hey, please, uh, Derek, please introduce yourself to everybody so we know who oh, you are. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, this is Derek Gascon. I was a uh, one of the first recording secretaries uh, for the Texas Assembly 
And uh, I got engaged with the assembly um, kind of, I think, in the mid middle of uh, 2020 when uh, the whole COVID thing started off. And my interest in that was just trying to figure out a way to protect myself from, from the government coming to stick a needle in my arm. Um, but as I got engaged with all that, meeting all of the like-minded people, I, I wanted to do more. So I became a, a recording secretary and, you know, we were doing great things, I think, in the Texas assembly that, um, you know, we were really, we were really rocking and rolling in terms of, of the advancements we were making, the number of people that were coming in. And it was really the Texas assembly that kept me engaged in a lot of things. I started to see some cracks in the, you know, the, the Anna Von Wright's facade that she puts out. Um, I, I, I found a, she brought on a marketing person and I did some research on her and found out she was just scamming the system and was probably brought in by uh, Anna Von Wright's to, to use that tool or the tool that she was trying to set up as a way to generate some money. Um, but what I really wanted to get to was um, the bank and uh, putting money in the bank. I think I was one of the first in the Texas Assembly that, that got introduced to Hunter. Um, I had a call with him, video conference with him um, early on. And, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I started to look sideways at it because his, his pitch around a bank was nothing about finance. It was all about, you know, this 528 um, vibrant vibrations or whatever. And so I started looking into him and I found out he had a cease and desist order for doing some kind of financial scheme in California. Um, that I think was probably only five or six years before I started looking into that. Um, and then I started looking into what his background was and he was talking about some of these new technologies that he created. And I've been in the high tech industry for 30 years. So I started looking for any, any information on this guy. Um, I couldn't find anything. I, it, none of the technology that he talked about was really all that impressive. Um, and so I, I was a little skeptical on the bank that was coming out. Um, and I feel really bad for, for Don, you and Dwayne and anybody else who, who, uh, who, you know, put money into that bank with the best of intentions. Um, I just, I just, uh, you know, when I saw that, I thought, okay, I'm going to wait and see what's going on with this whole thing. And then Anna started tearing down the, the Texas assembly and that's where, you know, everything started to fall into place in terms of how she was really just milking the system and using her, um, her knowledge. Um, if it's all hers, I don't know. She's probably got other people that are writing for her, I think. Um, but you know, the questions that needed to be asked uh, early on in all of this was, you know, what is the organization that she's talking about the Federation and all that sort of stuff. You know, they made the claims in 2020, late 2020, that all of the bonds had been delivered to the Federation. And uh, this guy, Heinz, or whatever his name is, um, Harold, he showed up at one of our face-to-face -face meetings and said, oh, they had the bonds and everything. So my thinking is, okay, well, they've got millions of bonds going back decades, generations, so who's going through all of that stuff? And you start to ask questions about what is the structure behind this government? Is the government going to hand over to a little old lady in Alaska, you know, millions and millions of bonds worth, you know, tens of millions, uh, tens of billions to hundreds of billions of trillions of dollars and let them just go at it? Um, you know, those are the kinds of questions that started popping up in my head. What is the real organization? You know, if Anna Von Wrights dies, who's second in command? Who takes over? Who keeps leading this whole thing? And there were never any answers that came through. Um, you know, as, as they tore down the Texas Assembly with completely contrived charges on, you know, what Eric was doing and what Kimberly was doing, um, you could see that, that her whole modus operandi was, just as Kimberly said, build something up, let it grow to the point where there's an expectation that the Federation is going to deliver on something because she knows she can't deliver. So then immediately she throws a grenade in and blows it up. She blew, she blew up Texas. She blew up California. 
Um, I did go back and read some of her recent stuff probably a couple weeks ago just to see how she was doing and she blew up Oregon. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, it's an unfortunate thing. And I, you know, I feel bad for, for all of us who were taken in by it. And, um, you know, the only thing I can say to anybody on here who's thinking about getting, you know, further in, into anything with, with the Von Wright's uh, approach is to not do it. Uh, don't believe anything she says. Um, she claimed that she had paperwork all filed and the bank was going to be set up within two weeks all the way back in 2016. Um, so she's, she's just lying about everything. And I mean, you know, if you think about it, she supposedly has this federation and her website hasn't changed in, since 2016 when I probably first started reading her website. Um, the only new thing that she's got at least when I stopped watching her, her videos, her weekly videos was she got a new, uh, she got a new chair and she got a new background for her video chats. And, you know, you start looking at these kinds of things and you think there's nobody's going to give, nobody in government is going to give this lady anything. She's got no organization. She's got, she's got no tangible qualities in terms of, you know, financial or business capabilities that I could tell. Um, so I just wanted to get that out because I, I, you know, I did see early on that there were some some problems with this whole bank thing that she was putting together. And it started getting me concerned about her whole approach to get money in the door. And she was getting more aggressive about it by building this bank up. And, and this hunter guy, his first thing is, you know, deposit five thousand dollars with us. We'll just put it in here and we'll, we'll hold on to it for you. And, um, you know. When, when you're believing these people are all in it with the best of intentions and goodness in their heart, you want to, you want to, you know, get on board and you want to be a part of something like that and completely understand how, how it's easy to get, you know, to fall for some of that stuff. And, you know, I just, I just wanted to get that out. Um, give you kind of my perspective on the, the banking thing. Cause I think the money part of it is, is really you know, it's putting people in dire straits when we don't need that, given where the economy is going, where this government is going. Um, we need to be as safe as possible. So thank you. I yield. Thank you very much, Derek. Derek is actually the recording secretary that papered me up with the Texas State Assembly. So uh, I reached out to him. Yeah, thank you, Derek. For sure, I feel bad about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I voluntarily did it. <laughs> Yvonne, yes, ma'am. Introduce yourself, please. Hello. Um, thanks for having this call. I just uh, jumped on at the beginning at the invitation of Darla from, uh, from Oregon. I'm in California. I uh, came to the assembly in probably the fall of 2021. It was right during a time when there was happening a split uh, on California, which I didn't really get, you know, what that was, but um, that's when I started attending. My paperwork was completed. I did the 928 package in November and similar, you know, to Derek's um, path, I saw something good. I wanted to help and uh, thought I'd like to be a recording secretary. So I uh, interviewed for that in uh, December and started my training as a recording secretary. Also, um, in January uh, of 2022, I attended a meeting of the Jural Assembly, which had just started a study project for the Jural Assembly Handbook. And, um, you know, with good intentions, but, but not a lot of um, smarts or, you know, pre-planning, these guys were like, yay, let's study the Jural <laughs> Assembly, you know, handbook. And I'm like, okay, I'm a trained facilitator. I know how to manage projects, blue, blue, blue. You know, these guys need help, right? So I jumped right in, um, was duly appointed as the secretary for the Jural Assembly and started working pretty much every day, just straightening up some obvious things that um, the assembly hadn't done. We didn't have role named emails. We didn't have, you know, clear uh, you know, secure documentation or places for documents and stuff. And with a background in IT, I just 
you know, got close to the IT guys and got some of that stuff put in place. But anyway, we started cooking on the journal assembly handbook study project. And we actually ran two different series of those. And um, over the next like four or five months or so, also at that time in January, I was asked to um, advise the vetting committee that it had newly been formed and was then asked to join the, um, you know, because of my background in business. And so then I was actually asked to join the vetting committee and um, so did that starting in February. So all through the spring, the winter and spring of 2022, um, as one of the Kims was saying, you know, as soon as as soon as you get cooking and things are are looking good, um, there starts to be interference. And the interference that we experienced both um, aimed at the vetting committee and aimed at the journal assembly um, came from uh, someone who was, or a couple of people that were on California, one of whom was um, the PKTF head. And um, there was a lot of disinformation that was being um, thrown out. Um, things that we were studying in the journal assembly project were being countered. Um, guidance that we had from training from Shannon Bookie um, about vetting was countered. And so uh, along about uh, June or so, we stopped the music. We just said, hold on, there's like too much confusion. Um, we need to get to the bottom of it as the vetting committee. And um, so we set up uh, meetings with Shannon. We um, published reports that um, are available about, you know, his straightening us out and count or, you know, clearing up some of the misinformation that was flying around. Um, all this to say that what we saw was, you know, anything to um, distract, um, to throw discord in, to get people emotionally jacked up and you know, at each other's throats. That's the kind of stuff that was happening. It just didn't make any sense at all. You know, and people would say that they really cared about, you know, we need to do this right and stuff, but but that wasn't really the result. You know, the result was just confusion. Our chief justice who'd been standing for, you know, two and a half years, um, they went after him and he stepped down. He just said, you know, this place is too toxic. That was the word that, was most uh, thrown out. You know, people started leaving. We had two of our four coordinators disappear, um, just step back. Um, that was like in May, June timeframe. Um, I stepped down as uh, the secretary for the general assembly at that time, because they were coming after me on because of both my participation in the vetting committee and the general assembly committee. And um Let's see, and then and then the general assembly was shut down. They said they said you can't assemble because you don't have a justice, right? <laughs> you need to have an officer, so on and so forth, whatever. So, so the whole thing, like all of this, you know, good energy and people learning and people taking more responsibility and becoming more self governing and really becoming knowledgeable based on not just the assembly handbooks but um, their own research and working with each other week by week, right? So anyway, that's what happened kind of through the summer. And then um, and in August, the vetting committee was shut down. <laughs> they just said, oh, you know, um, Shannon had told, we had a couple of meetings with him and he'd strained some things out and this is how we're doing it. And this is not how we're doing it. Okay, good, good, good. You know, we corrected our procedures. We communicated with the assembly. And, um, and then, he comes back and he says, oh, Anna smacked me upside the head. I had it all wrong. I apologize. We have to shut everything down. And all across the nation, all the vetting committees have to be shut down and start over. And I'm just like, wow, that's really, that's really drastic, right? So anyway, so everything went in the tank. Um, you know, me and my colleagues on the vetting committee, we just like rolled our eyes and stepped back and said, okay, I guess you're doing us a favor, right? And I, I you know, most of us are not um, participating with the, um, the assembly anymore. I think a couple still are. 
but anyway, so that's what happened through August. At that time, um, uh, through the, the man who had been our justice, he had been in touch with Darla. And, and um, you know, Darla mentioned that I met her through the banking thing. Well, this banking thing came up and I started participating with that. So I was actually a bank administrator during the time that Don mentioned, um, you know, the meetings were happening and Anna put her um, notice out in September saying the only safe place for the funds is global. And we had these rush of deposits. And part of what I was doing was just helping organize the process, right? And and I was working with Darla to do that. So, so I had my hands on the software and, you know, the stuff coming in and writing the procedures and training people to, you know, um, get people's paperwork in and all that kind of stuff. So I saw that, right. And long about, um, so, so like I said, we were dealing with this big rush of deposits and so on around October, September, October, right after Anna's announcement. And then um, in November, the beginning of November, Darla and I and one other person um, who was working closely with um, with Hunter at that time, we started to smell something that didn't look good. And we were we started to wonder about what the heck was going on. So what we did was um, we did what we called um, uh, st stop the music, but keep the band playing or something like that. <laughs> It's like we just needed to slow down. We didn't want to take anybody else's deposits um, because we weren't we weren't confident that you know there wasn't something screwy going on, and um, and I want to say um, at this point that a lot of what I'm going to report in, in the next few minutes here is um, actually documented in Mattermost. Um, so if anybody ha is on the Mattermost, you know American State Assembly you know, channels and stuff. There are two channels, one's called banking and one is called the Global Family International Trade Bank. And um, so back to in November when we started to, you know, uh, slow things down a little bit so that we could figure out what the heck was happening. We actually um, got that sort of organized and figured out. And in the first week of December, went to, uh, we actually went to Hunter with our questions and concerns. He blew up. So we went to Anna. Um, that was a recorded meeting. And um, she listened like, oh, mm, oh, mm, like that, you know. Um, but then very quickly after that, um, you know, turned on pretty much everybody and started writing nasty, you know, public statements about the people who were involved and you know what was actually happening and the story just kept changing every four minutes right so when don said that he had um well let me back well anyway there's more details i'll just say there's more details and um you know we started processing wire out requests on december 5th in the next two weeks i think we had like 44 people something like that that had um, requested their money out and a few got their funds returned. I think that Hunter's um, approach to that was strategic. He, um, I got my funds returned because he knew that I, I knew you know, what was going on. So he couldn't afford to have me have a claim against him, right? But, um, there's other people that I know that have not, you know, besides Don, have not um, received their funds back. I did two situation reports um, that were made public on the Mattermost channels that I mentioned. Um, for anyone who wants to see, you know, what were the facts that were happening in December and, you know, how many people had requested, what Hunter said he was going to do, what he didn't do. Um, you know, what the numbers were, so on and so forth. All of that is documented. Um, uh, let's see, most of the people who are working for Global left at the beginning of um, December. I and one other fellow stayed on. We were the only two with admin 
um, rights, you know, to the software, which by the way, Hunter didn't build, he just bought it. It's a package software. Um, and so we finished out December just processing people's, you know, wire out requests um, for Hunter to do the requests to actually accomplish them. Even all the ones that we listed there, I calculated would probably take about 10 hours of work. As of now, he hasn't completed that. So, but it's not because it's a lot of work. It's no big deal. Um, I left, um, the two of us that were left there, we stepped away at the end of December. I've not been in touch with Hunter. I don't have any contact with him. The man um, who was there with me at the end, he's now passed on. So uh, not available. I know that he was still in touch with Hunter though, um, beyond that moment, beyond January. Um, so I guess, I guess the reason I'm speaking now is just to uh, confirm you know, Don's uh, testimony and say, let people know that there is documentation in the record uh, on Matter Most about um, what happened. Um, it's fact-based and, um, you know, by a first-hand, you know, knowledge. And um, let's see what else do I want to say here. Um, there's a, there are, Continuing on what happened with the bank is um, Anna's response to this whole mess um, and the way that she's interacted with people and with me personally um, is completely, you know, similar to what um, others have reported here in that um, uh, she doesn't answer questions. She doesn't have evidence. She um, appeals to emotions and jacks things around uh, to suit her purpose. In some ways, um, she actually reveals what's going on. Um, I discovered, you know, or I realized what was happening when she wrote, uh, uh, you know, one of her articles one time and she talked about, um, you know, pooling investments and making 8% and stuff. And I think that's basically what was going on or is, is probably still going on. I think that, you know, people put their funds in and it was already mentioned before that this was a, a non-interest bearing, non-usury type setup, meaning that nobody was, it, it wasn't an investment. You know, it was not an investment. And yet Anna wrote something about, you know, people pooling their funds to get 8% and, you know, Yvonne just, you know, Yvonne and Darla just got everybody in there and they ran their own credit union. It doesn't have anything to do with Hunter or, or <laughs> Anna. That's completely whacked. That's completely wrong. Um, she's, she's spinning stories. But because she said that, I realized that that's probably what Hunter was doing. He was pulling these funds. He's, he's uh, you know, if you have a couple million dollars, you can get 8% if you put something in a long-term money market or CD or something like that. So that's what I think he did. And that's why I think he can't, he's not returning the funds because he'd have to pull it out, lose the take that he was screwing you know, scamming off the top. And I believe sharing with Anna and, and um, Harold. So again, just reference back the, um, the reports that were, you know, put in the matter most publicly. Um, I have those PDFs if anybody, you know, is not on matter most and once those reports, they can be made available. Um, yeah stay clear <laughs> stay clear of both of them Yvonne yes uh <clears throat> I think you were you talking about Kaivi yes uh Kaivi got um he was with Hunter, Hunter I believe something like 10 years ago and Kaivi was in charge of his uh, father's retirement money yes, and gave that to Hunter for his safekeeping and to let that build up. Now, <clears throat> Kaivi died last year. This year. This year, yeah. yeah. I mean, this spring. 
yeah. in the spring. And I was wondering if um, if you knew if anybody got it, uh, was a beneficiary for that money. Well, um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I mean, certainly in the bank records, beneficiaries were indicated. Um, I did have, um, uh, I did enjoy a visit with Kaivi and his mother in, in person when I happened to be traveling in the area where they were living. Um, and so, um, you know, if anybody, it would be his mom, you know. That's what I think. Might be something to look into, unfortunately, but it would uh, it would be a strike against Hunter. Well, you don't need to look too far to find those. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, okay. just uh, uh, me too. I don't hear anything. Is are people still on or? Wait, I think you're muted. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me now? Okay, sorry about that. I'm over here asking questions and nobody's paying attention to me. <laughs> uh um, I know uh Brian, you said your mom was a volunteer for the bank, for Anna's bank. Is she still with us? Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. You're talking about mute. Mute one of your devices. You have two devices. Oh, with the open microphone. Yeah, I know. Let me. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Are you there, Brian? You're muted. Okay. 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 Let me turn my phone. I'm going to turn my phone off here. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I can't hear anybody. You're good and hot. We can hear you. Uh, we can hear you, Brian. Uh, I'm on. I'm muted here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can't hear me. Yes. Look at my head. You can hear me. Yes. <laughs> All right. I can't hear you for some reason. Okay. That's fine. All right. No, I can hear you. Okay. Bottom uh, line is uh, I'm in New York. There's no one here that mentioned anything about New York. It was obviously was a small group. I was in a few years ago, around 2020, whatever, and um, did the paperwork and so on. And we had an issue here with a uh, with a coordinator uh, based in Western New York. I don't know if I should mention his name or not, but uh, Todd Wheeler Keller. And uh, it was very interesting because he couldn't communicate very well with people. And uh, we had a number of issues. He got, he, he was very negative with, uh, with women and all, especially. So what happens is we had someone who was in his late 80s, a gentleman in central New York. And just to give you an idea of the type of man he is, He's in his late 80s. He's taking care of his ill, his ill uh, uh, wife, and he has a child, 65 years old, who has been basically a vegetable most of his life, and he's taking care of him as well. And uh, godly man, godly Christian man. And uh, we had meetings that we were supposed to have with uh, this fellow, Todd. He wasn't showing up. He was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a large group. We had less than ten people, 
And, uh, but we all together said, we have to do something here. And this other gentleman was, uh, they stepped up to the plate when someone mentioned something. He said, well, I can help for a little while. And we said, we, who, who better off? I mean, he's, uh, he has a background in, um, and whatever, and able to coordinate things and so on. And I wrote an email to uh, Anna Von Wrights. I have it here somewhere. And uh, I was telling her how excited, you know, we always had the meeting and, you know, we loved it. You know. And she came back, this was in the morning and in the afternoon, I'd never forget this, uh, an extremely nasty, evil, talking about this man, a godly man now, okay? And um, and saying that she was comparing him with him with Hitler, re rotten Clinton. Okay. Anyway, uh, and and the Clintons as far as being a criminal. And I'm saying to myself, where the heck is this woman coming from? Either she's on dope or something, or off the wall. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, so from that opened my eyes about her, and then I began listening and learning about people in Texas and in California. And in Michigan and other states, and it was a, it was a similar type of thing. So realizing that, you know, <laughs> I don't have to be knocked over the head too many times to realize that something's not right. So uh, at that point, basically, things began dissolving and people that were doing something said, you know, we can't work like this. Here's a state, almost 20 million people, and we've only got, you know, not even 10 people. There's something wrong here. So, you know. Uh, can you still hear me? Hear me okay? You can hear me? Okay. So anyway, uh, that, that's that's basically it. I don't want to say too much. I got on a call because <laughs> Floyd, I, I actually caught the very tail end of your uh, call, that your four hour call you had. I I just found out about it uh, uh, like ten minutes before it was over. So I got on there and uh, and you mentioned something about anyone who might have an issue with uh, someone with uh, monies and so on. Well, I didn't partake in any of the bank or anything like that so i had something else related to uh some other people i won't mention any further maybe we, you know we might have some suggestions on that later but that's what i want to say i just wanted to chime in because uh, uh this this seems to be going on all over the place and people are waking up and i appreciate the uh expose you did with uh, on anna von rights and her, and her husband and so on i had no idea of any of those things but you just don't know sometimes who you're really dealing with. And uh, and there's some people who, like I said, they're not going to wake up. They don't want to wake up. I figured someone like Terry Sam, you know, would have, uh, this would have did it for her, but <laughs> apparently not. So it's hard to believe. Yeah. Everybody so, has a different rock bottom. Rock bottom. Yeah, water. exactly. So that's basically it. I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, and, okay. Uh, you know, let you know that, it's it, it's obviously you know it's the same it's it's the same thing all over probably so it is it's exactly all over um right. when i did my videos with uh, about anna uh you know a lot of the various uh, former state coordinators that she blew up uh, those assemblies contacted me uh, arizona utah california uh even hawaii uh, which we haven't mentioned and when i spoke to the uh, former coordinator in hawaii they had all the indigenous uh, native Hawaiians, you know, from the royal family all in. They were ready to stand up, you know, because they're overrun by the, uh, you know, the Asians, the Japanese in Hawaii, and they wanted their country back and they were ready to take it. You know, if any of you are familiar with the history of Hawaii, you know, of course, the, you know, we colonized it, came in, took it over. Um, but uh you know, same thing happened out there, and it's just a repetitive thing that she does. And sadly, none of the assemblies are ever going to stand up. You know, the bank is obviously a fraud, a fake. And uh, hopefully that this video, uh, this Zoom meeting, everybody's testimony here will prevent somebody else from being harmed. Now, let's take this a step further. Um, most of you are familiar with the Telegram group that I have set up, uh, Nationals for Truth. I have one that's just for news, and then I have another one that's just for Communication Hub. I created that just for you guys. Okay, I, It was originally supposed to be exactly what it is for, for us to reconnect that have been um, you know, extricated and decided we want to step away from Anna's assembly 
to co-mingle and communicate and build another um, another functional society. <clears throat> what you guys don't know, uh, although I was appointed justice or elected justice here in Texas, I am currently the um, chief appellate justice for the county of Califia, California. Uh, I created the entire uh, judicial structure as well as the law enforcement structure, the jail, and the penal system. Other people have designed other things for this county. This county is uh, 48,000 acres in Riverside County, California. If you go to Riverside and you draw a big oval, kind of like the Daytona Speedway, all the way down around Lake Matthews and back up around to Riverside, that's pretty much what she owns. She's had a land patents on it since 2010. I did the public notice myself on my YouTube channel. I am a notary, so I did the affidavit of publication and sent it to her. Governor Newsom's office in California was notified that uh, we were trying to take over California and that they should watch this video. So apparently they didn't watch the video, but they called uh, Madeline Tiggle, uh, the land patent owner, and asked her what she was trying to do to take over California. So Madeline asked her, have you watched the video? She said, no. She said, well, go watch the video and call me back. Now, mind you, only nine people in the world have Madeline's number. <laughs> and they managed to call her. Uh, that's how pro they, they made her come out of the private and go into the public to do this county. If that tells you anything, she's been private for a decade. Mm. So, um, <laughs> She got all this established. Um, registered with the California DMV for license plates, County of Califia license plates. I've already designed them. Uh, the first two plates, the handicap and the regular plate, uh, have been produced and uh, have been sent to Madeline to put on the car. Uh, treaties with, uh, you know, I think the number's up in the 20s or 30s now, different countries and tribes, uh, recognized by the Department of State. Uh, she was just informed by a official in the federal government to uh, establish her embassy, get it up and go get a building, get it up and running and establish a bank. Uh, I have another individual who already has a private bank. They're looking for a brick and mortar building. I'm fixing to marry those two as soon as I get off of this Zoom. That's my next Zoom. Um, so I'm very busy. Um, I'm affiliated with that. And what I'm trying to emulate is to take what she's doing because she's not doing it for fame, infamy, infamy because most of you have never heard of her, never heard of what the heck's going on over there uh, because it's not for her. This is not even for her children who are in high school going into college age. It's for their children. Okay, This is a community of like-minded, intelligent people who are on the path to sovereignty, freedom, and intellectual, spiritual freedom um, where the children will get that education, that real, true, private education that the elite get that we don't get because we get the public education, institutionalism, dumbed down and programmed. And it all starts with our parents immediately at the hospital at our birth, B-E-R-T-H, into the United States citizenship. So that's a whole nother topic. Uh, but what we're here on is AVR, Anna Von Wright's, and uh, the current banking situation. Um, all I can say is uh, everybody who has a um, – oh, no. Uh, somebody's trying to jump on the Zoom. They, they think Bob's going to be on here talking, um, and I wish he was. Um, so there's a lot of misnomers about Anna and her motives, uh, but everybody here uh, clearly knows now um, the real Anna Von Wrights, the real Federation, the, what the state's assemblies look like. They're never going to stand up. There's never going to be a bank. There's never going to be a debit card. And uh, I think we're just going to find more and more people uh, left on a trail of carcasses where they have been just sucked dry by the Anna Von Wright's cult. Um, anybody else have anything they would like to add to this uh, conversation? Any testimony? I know a few people have you know, fallen off and it is, uh, we're going on over two and a half hours, going into three, which is lengthy. I wasn't expecting to go this long. 
But if you're not in the Telegram group, let me uh, go get that link and uh, I'll put it in the chat so all you guys can join it. We can stay in communique. You can share this, have other uh, people join this Telegram. And we can all work together. That way we don't have to double work. Um, Eric Dingus, like I said, uh, he traveled all over the country talking to the Secret Service, FBI, sheriffs, police chiefs, you know, I'd call him out of the blue and he'd be in, you know, BFE somewhere, you know, dealing with some noble cause for some assembly member. Uh, but him, hopefully his connection um, has a little fire, a little motivation and still inside of him to pursue Anna. And we can all get together and create something, uh, even put together a civil RICO. Uh, I told you guys that I will help you uh, with that as much as possible. If you need a template, I can point you in the right direction to my cases that are filed in Travis County, Austin, Texas. Um, and I can put you in the, to the right one. I just got to go to the clerk's record and look it up. Uh, they don't have them online. You have to have to go there physically to inventory the archives to get them because they're because of the age. But I have some in there that are just, you know, perfect template for what you want to do to file a civil recall. Uh, yeah, really clean. I got really good back for, you know, wrote the like the sixth one. Um, but anybody, does anybody have anything else to add? I'll digress. I'm eager to see those. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're very well done. When you read them, you're like, oh, man, how come you didn't win this? <laughs> okay. That bad. Uh, they, were, they weren't going to let me win anything, sadly. That's that's when my experience of the uh, de facto uh, cor uh, corruption in the state of Texas corporation. You know, of course, I have the Dun & Bradstreet background. This is a report that all the judiciary courts in the state of Texas are for-profit corporations. Absolutely. Um, so there's no doubt about it. Um, but I want to thank everybody for coming on. I want to thank everybody for sharing their experience. Uh, if you'd like a recording of this, I'll post it in the telegram room and you can download it, share it with anybody and everybody, uh, put this out there, share it, um, because people need to know this, especially people that are in the RV, they need to watch this video because if they run into Anna Von Reitz or somebody that's associated with the, any one of the assemblies that's, you know, drunk on the Kool-Aid says, hey, come over here. This is where you need to put your money. You know, we don't want to hear about the lottery winners, you know, who are washed up on the side of the road or in prison or dead or penniless. Because that's not what it's all about. Um, it's all about humanitarian projects. So it's not better humanitarian to send them to a uh, straight to a scam artist, a con person. So I hope we've put together enough information, given you enough evidence to change your mind or at least dissuade you from having an association with Anna Von Wrights. If you're currently involved with her assemblies, uh, my advice to you is to leave immediately, void your contracts, your memberships, whatever. You do not need Anna Von Wrights. You don't need that assembly. Do you need the people that are in that assembly? Yes, those are good people. They mean well. They have a good heart. They're trying to go the right direction, but I promise you, take my word for it, okay? If you want to tell you this, you know, I do it on the Bible. Here's the Bible. There it is. I put my right hand on it when I talk to you folks, because that's why I'm here. God is making me do this. I'm not doing it because this is what I want to do at nine o'clock on a Thursday night. I would rather be at the gym right now, to be honest with you, because uh, I'm a gym rat. That's my sanctuary. That's where I go to de-stress and, uh, and refocus. Uh, but I'm not there and I'm dealing with this. But Anna is on my radar. Um, I'm just, I'm appalled at what she's done and uh, what she continues to do and that people are still incorporated with Anna Von Wrights and her whole assembly mess. Um, I'm ready to close this out. If everybody else is, I think we've covered everything. Beat the horse where there is no more carcass left to beat. If anybody wants to add anything, please do before I, we end. Let me caveat with this. You can always reach me at the Fearless Floyd Show at yahoo.com. Fearlessfloydshow.com is my website. I'm on every social media platform you can shake a stick at. Uh, if somebody's on my website uh, and I'm promoting them, I've vetted them. They're the real deal. 
I'm associated with some great people. I can pretty much call any guru I want, anybody, social media influencer on my phone. If I don't have their direct number, I can call somebody who can call them. So I can move, I can shake, I am an influencer. Um, it's not something that, you know, I'm trying to do to gain more subscribers or viewers or likes or shares or whatever. I'm not into that. I'm going to be here again tomorrow at noon doing my show, talking about whatever the topic is that I want to talk about that day. And then I'm going to be back on Monday and I'm going to be doing the same thing and nobody's going to stop me. I don't care who they are. And I'm going to continue to fight the good fight, fight for the little guy and the underdog, the underdog and especially the women gender who, uh, you know, are getting treated real badly. So I'm an underdog for all those. Um, you know, I'm really blessed and thankful and grateful that I have a wonderful daughter who should be just, you know, unruly, batshit, crazy, in prison, prostitute, drug addict, all of that, just like Anna's daughter. And she's not, she's getting her PhD. So I want to give accolades to that. Thank you for doing that for me. Um, very impressed with her. She's a remarkable woman. Uh, anybody else have anything to add before I close out? Thank you everybody for being here. Um, sadly, some of uh, this, the uh, Seeds of Wisdom team couldn't be here. Salty did make it. Thank you, Salty, for being here. Thank you for uh, hearing my pleas. I hope this uh, information you can pass along to the other uh, Seeds of Wisdom team members and that it'll open them their eyes and they can share it with their members in their different Telegram groups or it can be posted on the website, however you want to do it. I'm uploading this to my platforms. It'll be all over my platforms because it is my mission in life to take Anna Von Wright's down. If I have to do it personally, individually, alone, or with a team, I'm more than willing to do it. And, it, you know, I've been trying to do it for years. So this is nothing new for me, not a new subject matter. As you can see, I've been in contact uh, steadily with the same people that I was originally in contact with in 2020 in the Texas State Assembly. Eric and I still talk. Kim, we meet regularly uh, every two weeks, like they stated. When they're in town, we go have lunch together. So I try to keep it community. I have an open invitation to you, Salty, to take you to lunch uh, on me or dinner, whatever that looks like, so I can introduce myself personally to her. Um, hopefully, I'm accepted into the Seeds of Wisdom community as you know, one of the truth tellers, one of the truth seekers. And with that, I will close out this meeting. Again, thank you, everybody, for being here. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, log on to the Telegram, keeping communication there. And everybody have a good night, safe weekend. And again, thank you for being here. And you also. Thank you, Floyd. You're more than welcome. Good night. Thank you. Yes. Good night. Thank you.